You know, Sound Blaster 16 was perhaps the most famous sound card Creative has ever released. It was the third generation of Sound Blasters. The new card introduced a couple of new features. 16-bit CD quality digital audio, MPU for a one compatible controller, and a connector for connecting Wavetable daughter boards called Wave Blaster. But was it overall better than its predecessors? With Sound Blaster 16, Creative went completely mental and released about a billion different models and revisions. Over the years, I've collected 9 different models and I'm about to cover all of them. You can even find cards with the same model number, but slightly different features. Like this CT2230. I've got two of these. One with ASP chips soldered on the board directly, and the other one with a slot for it. Let's have a look at different models and find out what all the differences are, if there actually are any. This video is gonna be a bit longer than usual, since I've got so many models and I'd like to compare features and actual sound quality of all these cards. I would divide Sound Blaster 16 into four different versions. If I can count correctly, there have been released exactly 72 models of Sound Blaster 16. About a half of the models use Yamaha's OPL3 chip, which was later replaced by Creative's own CQM which stands for Creative Quadratic Modulation. Creative wanted to cut the cost, so they cloned OPL3 chip, but its FM representation is frowned upon by some people who don't like it for being unfaithful to the OPL3. I can't say I'm utterly repulsed by the CQM's FM synth, but I'll let you decide which sounds better. For these cards, Creative developed Advanced Signal Processor that provided audio compression on decompression and EQ sound support. But it's got one tiny drawback. There's literally only one game, that supports it, and the ASTFX. Some models had the processor soldered on directly, some had a socket for it, and some just didn't have either. This massive success forced Creative to remove this feature completely from future cards. It's a cheaper sister to the Sound Blaster 16. Some models used Yamaha's OPL, but most models used CQM. There were three different versions of Vibra chip. Vibra 16S was the first version and used either Yamaha's OPL or Creative's CQM, depending on the model number. Then they released Vibra 16C, which used only CQM. And lastly, Vibra 16X and XV used CQM as well. Even cheaper, much simpler and uglier design. The main difference was the introduction of Creative Wave Synth a physical modeling software synthesizer created by Seal Systems. It, however, doesn't work in DOS and needs quite powerful CPU. Well, it needed powerful CPU when it came out. It works a bit like FM Synthesis. It also tries to generate real sounds, but unlike FM Synth, WaveSynth uses software approach on series of complex algorithms. This card was essentially made by Insonic, that was bought by Creative to acquire some intellectual properties. And since it's a PCI card, I'm not gonna cover it. Every model is physically different. Some are long, some are short, some are white, and one look like this. Let's have a look at the backplate. CT1000 models have volume wheel on the backplate, which disappeared with CT2000 release. After that, volume was adjusted in Mixer Set program. Other than that, it's a standard backplate with line in, mic in, line out, speaker out, and game pause. Most of the models have some kind of CD ROM interface, either IDE or CSI. On WaveFX models, don't have any anymore. It seems to me that all models have PC speaker connector and CD audio connectors. Even though Sound Blaster 16 was Creative's most famous card, it was also most buggy card. At least that's what they say about it. Models starting with CT1 are supposed to be most affected. With the release of CT2 models, most of the bugs should have disappeared. Perhaps the most famous bug was hanging out. This bug is usually associated with Sound Blaster 16 with specific DSP versions. 4.11, 12 and 13. It happens perhaps to every MIDI sound card I've tested though, even high-end sound modules from Roland or Yamaha connected to whatever sound card. 
This bug is described as a problem with Wave Blaster MIDI Doorboard, or sound modules connected through the game port where some notes keep playing and are not stopped when they should be and hang for a long time, hence the name Hanging Note. Not all games suffer from this bug, however. For example, both Dooms, Raptor or Duke 3D suffer from this bug. Another bug associated with the MPU interface on the same DSP chips produced quite terrible and unwanted sounds during MIDI playback. On again, when a daughter board is used to playback MIDI on digital audio is greater than 11 kHz, the music will stutter. In single cycle DMA mode, various clicks and pops can be heard during digital audio playback. Unfortunately, no matter how hard I tried, with whatever card model, I couldn't replicate any of these bugs. The samples you heard I found on YouTube. I may be the most fortunate person on the planet, or these bugs just don't affect my models even though they should. This is the first creative sound card with Wave Blaster connector. As all of you already know, it's there to connect Wavetable MIDI daughter boards with the sound card. It should work with all daughter boards you may find. I tested two of them, and it worked just fine despite all the rumors I've heard about it, on despite all the bugs I've described a while ago. Most of the models don't even need drivers to work under DOS, but some do. It's more convenient to install them anyway, if for nothing else, I install them to be able to adjust the volume. Drivers for all models are pretty much the same. On the installation is easy and straightforward as it usually is in the case of Creative on the installation software. It installs all necessary drivers and tools, updates system files and you're ready to go. These drivers don't take too much of memory, I've never had any problem running any program or game. Mixer is as easy as it gets. It varies widely depending on the model number and its equipment. This is my usual silence test to see if the card produces noise even when it's not used, with on without the amp. On the FM test comes later.
Even though Sound Blaster 16 is a successor to the Sound Blaster Pro, it's not fully compatible with any other Sound Blaster, Pro 2 or 1. However, it works fine in most games I've tested, and if it doesn't, it should work with Adlib driver. But it also partly depends on what model you use. I'll explain in a while why. Since the FM sample section is gonna be very long today, I'm gonna wrap it up right now. If you want to get some Blaster 16 for gaming, do not get any model starting with CT1, unless you want it for your collection or something. Sure, I've tested only one card, CT1770, so at least don't buy this one. First, it's horribly shielded. You can hear anything that happens inside or even outside the rig. Second, it's too noisy for my liking. Third, it suffers from all the bugs I've described earlier, even though I can replicate them. And fourth, it's more expensive than newer cards. CT4170 is perhaps even worse. It's got creative CQM instead of Yamaha OPL chip, it's quite noisy as well, it's missing Wave Blaster connector, but the worst of all is its problem with 16-bit high DMA. It uses the same DMA for 8 and 16-bit, and thus the game drivers that rely on high DMA, like Duke or Rise of the Triad, don't work, or you need to use Sound Blaster or Sound Blaster Pro driver with 8-bit samples. CT2 to 60 works fine, but its output is as terrible as that of CT1770. CT2770 is a value addition. It was a low-cost version that's missing Wave Blaster connector, ASP socket and needs drivers to operate, but its output was the cleanest of the bunch and it's got Yamaha's OPL3. This is a good card for those that want a cheaper Sound Blaster 16 with cleanest output and don't care about Wave Blaster. You can always connect an external sound module through GamePort. If it were up to me and I'd wanted just one card for gaming, I'd get CT2890. It's one of the few models that can handle sound effects in flashback, and the only model that works in Monkey Island 2 on Space Quest 1 with Sound Blaster drivers. Other models had to use Headlip driver. It's also one of the models with cleanest output when using Lineout. Unfortunately, its amplifier is not too good. Unlike value and WaveFX versions, it's got Wave Blaster connector and Yamaha's OPL3 chip. Volume levels are similar between models, but CT2940 and 4170 were a bit louder than the rest. And now the FM test. It's going to be long, so I'm going to sit off now. Let me know what you reckon in the comments, and see you next time.